All right, so we have 6.3 medians and altitudes of triangles. This is the last section that will be on the 6.1 to 6.3 quiz. There's a lot of terms on the quiz. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, and I'll break it down for you on the next slide, I think. But before we do, we have these two problems. Um, they're from 6.1. So if you need to look back, 6.1. Um, it says find the measure of K, J, L. So we want to find the measure of this angle. Right now we know that it is 7x. Um, basically in this picture you need to see that we have a bisector and that from L to the um, angle ray is congruent um, on both sides. So that means the angles are going to be congruent. So you would set them equal. 7x equals 3x plus 16. So I'm taking my two angles and setting them equal because they do equal. I'm going to take my smaller x and move it over by subtracting. 7x minus 3x is 4x, which equals 16. Divide by 4 and x equals 4. Um, it wants me to find the measure of angle oops, K, J, L. So again, K, J, L um, is currently 7 times x. So we're going to plug in x, which is 4. And 7 times 4 is 28 degrees. You can always check by plugging it into the other angle. So 3 times 4 plus 16. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 16 is 28. So either way, um, it's a good way to check yourself. This next one, it tells you that you have two angles that are congruent, which means, again, you have a bisector. And from a point on the bisector, to the rays are going to be congruent, so you would set them equal. Um, we're going to take the smaller x and move it over. So 11 equals 2x plus 1, subtract 1, 2x equals 10, divide by 2 and x equals 5. It wants me to find the length of FG, which is x plus 11, so I'm going to plug in x. So it would be 5 plus 11, so the length of FG is 16. Again, you can always plug it into the other. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is still 16. So it's a good way to check yourself, make sure you're getting them right. We're going to move on to new-ish material. This is this part's kind of review, um, but all of these are on your quiz. So you haven't learned about a median or an altitude, but you have learned about a perpendicular bisector and an angle bisector. So you're going to need to make sure you study this or make flashcards or something to that extent. Starting with a perpendicular bisector, it is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. Um, it bisects segments. Um, it You can go ahead and write that in, and I'll show you what it looks like. So it cuts a line in half, and you would know that by like little tick marks like this. And it is perpendicular when it intersects that line. So perpendicular bisector, if you have a triangle and you have three perpendicular bisectors that intersect, they form a circumcenter. And the property for this, um, the property would be like mathematical property, um, is that it's equal distance to the vertices. If you don't like the word vertice, you can always say equal distance to the angles, um, because that's the same thing. So that's a perpendicular bisector. You'll see an example at the bottom of your page. Perpendicular bisector. I don't have it on my screen, um, but... If you look at it, um, it'll show you that 
point P is equal distance to angle A, to angle B, and to angle C. It's got those lines, okay? An angle bisector uh, bisects angles. Shocking. It's a very good definition. Very long, very lengthy. The point of concurrency is an in-center, and it is equidistant to the sides. Equidistant to the sides. So again, you have a picture at the bottom of the page, um, and it shows that it's got lines, little tick marks, um, from the center to the sides of the triangle. Okay, so from the center to the sides. We're going to talk about a median and altitude, so you're not going to fill anything in here yet. We're going to come back to this on uh, the last slide, I believe. We're going to talk about medians and altitudes. Use medians and find the centroids of triangles. So if you are good at guessing, you know that this is another type of center that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to use altitudes to find an orthocenter. And again, if you are, I'm not a betting woman, but if I were, an orthocenter is another type of center. These are the last two types of centers. Um, a centroid is much more popular than an orthocenter. Um, you won't really see an orthocenter very much. So we're going to talk about it first. Um, well, let's talk about a median. A median of a triangle. This is your blank on number two, page two. A median of a triangle is a segment from the vertex, so from A, to the midpoint of the opposite side. So it goes from the vertex to a midpoint. Vertex to midpoint. So it goes from vertex to the midpoint. So if I were to do this on my paper, which you have this, you're going to approximate the center of every line. So go ahead and find the midpoint of every, whoop, the midpoint of every side. Do the best that you can. So I will do the same in drawing a midpoint. So you're looking at each line segment and trying to find the middle of each and every line segment. You're not going to be perfect unless you want to sit here with a ruler. I don't want to. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, here. Sure. So once you find the midpoint of each line, done, you draw a straight line from the midpoint to the opposite vertex. So you draw a straight line from the midpoint to the opposite vertex. Look at how pretty mine turned out to be. So midpoint, opposite vertex, midpoint, opposite vertex, midpoint, ooh, that one's not pretty. It is what it is. So, um, once you do that, the point of concurrency is called the centroid. So the point where all of them intersect is called a centroid. So it's not going to be perfect, um, your picture here, obviously. Um, but you just need to know that it's from a midpoint to the opposite vertex. So midpoint to vertex every single time. If you need to pause to finish, go ahead and pause. I'm going to keep going. The three medians of a triangle are concurrent. The point of concurrency is called the centroid. And the centroid is always inside of the triangle. So go ahead and write that it's always inside of the triangle. So even if it's acute, right, or obtuse, it's always on the inside. If you notice, there are a ton of lines on these pictures. Um, these lines on the sides mean that this is the midpoint. Same thing over here. This segment is congruent to this segment, which means they come together at the midpoint. Midpoint. So it's just proof that these are the midpoints of the triangles. Um, and then they're drawn from the midpoint to the opposite vertex, if you see. Okay, so um, the medians of a triangle have a special concurrency property. We will have to practice um, because we're very good at fractions around here. Um, the centroid of a triangle, ready, is two 
two-thirds of the distance from the vertex to the midpoint. So go ahead and fill in two-thirds, and then you're going to highlight from vertex to midpoint. So from vertex to midpoint. I will teach you how to do this um, very simply. <sighs> so from vertex, so let's say we're going from B to midpoint. This is two-thirds of the entire line, which means from B to F is one-third, because two-thirds plus one-third is three-thirds, which is one. Same thing if I went from C to P, so from my vertex to my midpoint is two-thirds, so from my midpoint, the rest of the line is one-third, you should be able to use your eyeball on this, that one of them literally looks longer than the other. So A, P is the two-thirds, and then P, D is the one-third. So, if you're good at baking, maybe you'll be good at this. We'll talk about it. Um, this just lists what I literally just told you. So, I'm going to practice with you. Let's say the whole line was 12. The easiest thing, the easiest thing is to find the one-third. So to find the one-third, so one-third of 12. Use your brain a little bit. Um, what you're going to do, one-third of 12 is 4. So what you can do is take the whole line and divide it by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So if the one-third, the length is four, to find the two-thirds, you're going to double the one-third. Here's why. One-third times two, you'd put it over one. One-third times two, multiply straight across, one times two is two. Multiply the bottom, three times one is three. So if you double one-third, that gives you two-thirds. So, if my one-third is four, double of that would give me eight. And four plus eight is 12, the whole line. So my highest suggestion is to find the one-third, divide by three, and then that'll help you find the two-thirds. So, let's do our first example. Oops, sorry, skipped. In triangle RST, point Q is the centroid. VQ is 5. Find RQ and RV. RQ and RV. So first we need to decide, do we have one-third, two-thirds, or the entire line? So I want you to use your, your brain a little bit. The whole line, I just highlighted in green. QV looks like the one-third. It is the one-third. So we're going to find the two-thirds. So again, in order to find the two-thirds, you're going to double the one-third. So double of five is ten. So that means our Q is ten. That means the whole length of the line would be ten plus five, which is 15, which makes sense because what is one third of 15? 5. Okay, so it's kind of a little bit like a puzzle. So I'm going to write my answer RQ is 10, RV, which is the full length of the line, RV is 15. That's it. Our next example, it says point P is the centroid of triangle LMN. QN, QN is 12.6. Find PN and find QP. We need to decide, do we have the one-third, the two-third, or the whole line? Um, I'm going to say that we have the whole entire line. So when you have the whole line, you're going to find the one-third first. 
So remember to find the one third. You take the full length of the line and divide by three. Um, so we're gonna get four point two. So the one third is four point two. So that's QP. To find the two thirds, which is PN, you're gonna double it. Four point two times two, so times two would be 8.4. You can always check yourself because they should add up to the full length of the line which is 12.6 and if you added them up you would get 12.6. So we did good. I'm going to go ahead and flip to the next page. I believe honors had a question. I'll go back to that at the end um, so my standard can finish their notes. An altitude, this is fill in the blank, an altitude of a triangle is the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the opposite side or to the line that contains the opposite side. So I'll explain this, just go ahead and write it in. An altitude of a triangle is the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the opposite side or to the line that contains the opposite side. Every triangle has three altitudes. The lines containing the altitudes are concurrent. The intersection at that point is called the orthocenter. Um, and then an orthocenter can lie inside, on the side, or outside of your triangle. So here's what you need to know about an orthocenter. This is a vocabulary word you just need to know. Um, there's no mathematical property. Um, all you need to know is that an altitude, an altitude forms an orthocenter. An altitude is a perpendicular segment. So basically you go from a vertex to the opposite segment um, and it needs to be perpendicular with the opposite segment. So this is different than a perpendicular bisector because this segment is not in the middle of the line. This side is clearly larger than this side. So an altitude is just a segment from a vertex perpendicularly to the opposite side. Okay, and then where all three of these connect, this is called an orthocenter. Um, so again, there's really no math involved with an orthocenter. You just need to attach these two words together and be able to pick out an, um, a, perpendicular by, or a perpendicular segment. That's it. We'll go back to the first page for my standard um, and fill in the rest. So we have a median. A median is a segment that goes from the vertex to the midpoint. Um, it's supposed to say of opposite side. To the midpoint of opposite side. So median goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Um, the point of concurrency, so where all of the medians intersect in a triangle, is called a centroid. And then the mathematical property is that it is two-thirds the distance from the vertex to the side. So two-thirds from vertex to side. Two-thirds from vertex to side. Last one is an altitude. It's a segment from the vertex perpendicular to the side or a line containing a side. It creates an orthocenter and there's no mathematical property. So go ahead and pause if you need to. This is where my standard will stop. My honors, we have one more problem. It is on page four. We will finish this. Point D is the centroid of ABC. Find the value of X and the lengths of the given segments. So in this picture, we have AD, which appears to be the two thirds. And we have DE, which is the one-third. So what we know is that if we took DE and multiplied it times 2, 
that would equal um, AD. So again, if we took DE and multiplied it, I'll write it over here, multiplied it times 2, that would give us the length of AD. So we're going to use what they gave us and um, plug in. So 2 times DE, the length of DE, which they gave us as 3x minus 2, equals the length of AD, which is 5x. So now that we have this, you're going to solve. We're going to distribute. 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So you could do this a couple ways. We always move the smaller x, which is perfectly fine, um, except for you'd have nothing over here. Um, you can do that if you want to. Here's where people make a mistake. 6x minus 5x is x. Drop down your negative 4. 5x minus 5x is 0. So there's still a number on the right side of the equal sign. Um, we're going to add 4, and x equals 4. So x equals 4. So any way you would have solved it, you would have gotten x equals 4, and that's fine. And then it says find the given lengths. So AD is equal to 5 times 4. So AD equals 20. DE, so DE was the one third. It should be about half of 20, which is 10. So let's see. 3 times 4 minus 2. 3 times 4 is 12. Minus 2 is 10. So perfect. So we got 20 and 10. The full length of the line would be 30. Um, a third of 30 is 10. It all works out. So this is 6.3. Thank you for watching.